Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk all about bump steer. I'm going to cover what bump steer is, how you can change it, certain changes you might make to your car that will affect the bump steer and what it actually does on the track. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Okay, so question one is what is bump steer? Now, bump steer is a term that we use to describe how the angle of the wheels changes as we move through the suspension travel. So for example, when you compress or extend the suspension, do your front tires angle in or out like that, toe in or out more. Now, there's two terms we used to describe. We've got bump in and bump out. Now, bump in is as the suspension is compressed, the tires toe in and bump out is the opposite of that. When the suspension is compressed, the tires toe out. And that's basically the terms used to describe bump steer. Okay, so now we know what bump steer is, we need to know what we're aiming for when we tune it and how we actually tune it. So almost all of the time, me and Tommy aim to have our cars with zero bump steer at all. So as the suspension's compressed, the tires don't rotate at all. They just stay the same towing angle as we set. Now, this is the most predictable steering feel, easiest to drive, because nothing's changing as you go through the corners. It's all it's gonna stay in the same place as you expected. Now, the way that you can tune the bump steer to either set it to zero or whatever is by changing the angle of these two steering links here. Now, if you either lower the outboard end or raise the inboard end, you'll get more bump in. And if you raise the outboard end or lower the inboard end, then you'll get more bump out. Now, there's two ways of doing this. We've either got adding or removing spacers from the steering plate on the end, or you can raise or lower the rack on the B6.4 by two millimeters, the steering rack, which usually you'll do if you run out of spaces to remove on the outside, you can, you can raise it up. So that's pretty much how the bump steer is tuned on the car. There are three things which affect the bump steer without you changing the angle of that link. You've left it, but you've changed something else on your car and now the bump steer looks all funny and you're confused. Now, the first of these things is the hub height. So, as you raise or lower the front hub height on your car, you are also raising or lowering that steering plate on the outside. So, pretty much as simple as, if you raise your hubs by one mil, you're gonna wanna take one millimeter of spacers off that steering plate there. So, you raise it, you take off the same amount of spacers, you lower it by one mil, you add one mil. Now, if you run out of spacers on the plate to remove, then you can raise up your steering rack on the inside, which will give you an extra two mil to work with. So that's the first one. The second one is changing the caster. Now, normally when you reduce the caster, you're going to get more bump in. And this is because, imagine if you flatten out the, the hubs, the C hubs, you're also going to raise up again that steering plate compared to where the rack is so once again if you reduce the caster you're going to want to either remove spacers from the outside steering plate or you're going to want to raise up that steering rack in the middle in order to get those links back to where they originally were now there is another one when you change the bolstered spacers underneath this top camber link it does also have a slight effect on the bump steer not very big at all it's only if you make a really big change like two or three mil that you're really going to notice it so just keep an eye on that one if you do make a radical change there to the camber link spacing just check your bump steer and readjust with the method i said before to get it back to where it always was okay now i'm going to talk about the effects that bump steer can have on the track how you can tune bump steer maybe to change the handling of your car on the track now, as I said, 90% of the time, I would leave it just on zero bump steer. Just leave it as it is. It's going to be the easiest to drive, most predictable. You're going to know what the steering feel is going to do in the corner. But saying that, you can change it. So imagine you've got a little bit of bump in in the car. So as you push the suspension down, the front tires toe in a little bit. Now, you can use that so that as your car rolls in, 
imagine you're compressing the outside suspension, the outside tyre will also turn in a little bit more. So you can get just more lock on the outer wheel as the car rolls over in the corner. So what that can do is, imagine you need a bit more steering in hairpins or something, you're lacking a bit of front end, you just want your car to really hug in and go around the corner. You can add a little bit of bump into your car, so that as your car leans in, it will turn more on the outside and hug around the corner. Now, you can do the opposite with bump out. If your car's really edgy, just feels like it rolls over the front and hooks in the corner, you can have a little bit of bump out in the car by maybe adding some spaces on that outside plate. And that will allow the tyre to just open out slightly as your car leans into the corner and will take away a little bit of that edginess and hook out of the car. But again, these are fixes, but they could make the steering less predictable for you as you don't always know where the wheels are going to be pointing. But as I say, maybe play with it, see what you think, give it a go. And yeah, that's about it for this video on bump steer. So I hope you liked it. Stay tuned and we'll be back with you in the next one.